This episode is sponsored by Endel, an app that creates personalized soundscapes to help you focus, relax, and sleep. The first hundred people to click the link in the description will get a free one-week trial. When you look out at a pond, you are rarely ever staring at just a body of water, some sort of liquid mass separate from the trees and vegetation around it. The pond itself is usually full of life, sometimes as large as a fish, sometimes as small as a bacterium. But sometimes those tinier organisms come together to form large colonies that coat the sediment in and around the pond, like these Begiotoa, which might look like bits of string unfurling underneath the microscope, but are actually hundreds of individual bacteria that have attached to each other to create a filament. Begiotoa are sulfur bacteria, and you can see the sulfur they've all stored shining as the filament glides past, glittering like a diamond-studded bracelet. And just as the bacteria gather to form a filament, the filaments gather to form a mat, weaving together tens of thousands of Begiotoa into a white carpet that lines surfaces found in marine and freshwater habitats alike. And that is great news for James, our master of microscopes, because one of his sampling ponds happens to have some of these Begiotoa carpets, making it very easy for him to just collect a bit from the mat to check out under the microscope. Or at least, it used to be easy. Recently, for some reason, the pond hasn't yielded quite as much Begiotoa as it used to. In fact, it's barely produced any. I don't know quite what happened, but James suspects a new resident of the pond, a family of beavers, that could have potentially changed some of the chemical composition, making it less habitable for the Begiotoa. But in its place, another bacteria has come to take over the thick biofilms of the pond, filamentous cyanobacteria. And while there's plenty to distinguish one from the other, there's one very important trait that unites them and makes them similarly mysterious. It is in the way they move. Maybe you've picked up on it already. The long lengths of Begiotoa and cyanobacteria gliding across the slide. There are only a few groups of bacteria that do this kind of gliding, but they're found across a plethora of environments, including ponds, soil, and, surprise, in our own mouths. Those fast-moving bacteria are largely moving with the aid of flagella, a helical structure powered by ATP that propels the bacteria in different directions. But gliding does not involve those flagella. Gliding involves something much more slick than flagella, complex polysaccharides, which scientists call by a much cooler name, slime. A thread gliding across slime sounds more like an arts and crafts project gone wrong than a complex form of motion that shapes entire ecosystems, but of course, that is exactly what gliding turns out to be. To appreciate the importance of this movement, let's continue with cyanobacteria, which have been photosynthesizing and oxygenating our world for billions of years. They are small, but the impact they are able to have on the world around them is huge, and all this without the aid of flagella to move them around. Of course, it would be a massive challenge for cyanobacteria to survive if they couldn't move anywhere. They are photosynthetic organisms after all, so even if they're not hunting down prey, they are on the hunt for sunlight. Fortunately, they already have the tools in place to sense sunlight. The pigments they use to perform photosynthesis can also, when they detect light, set off the reactions that drive the cyanobacteria in the right direction. But not all light is the same. Some species of cyanobacteria, for example, will glide away from blue light, while others ignore color and instead gauge their response based on the intensity of light. These responses will vary with the species, as will the way they glide. Some can bend, others can rotate along the axis of their filament, but the end result is the same, a slow but directed movement in search of light that will one day be food. But these filamentous cyanobacteria 
have hit on more than just a steady, graceful path towards the light. They are collective organisms, gathering into filaments and mats. They can even aggregate into toxic blooms that can span hundreds of square miles, suffocating or poisoning the unfortunate organisms that come in contact with them. And one of the challenges of forming these kinds of collections is that it requires diverting resources towards making the extracellular structures that keep the cells together. And that can come at the expense of dividing and making more cyanobacteria. So if there are disadvantages, there must be an advantage. And there's a big one. By working together, these colonies can allow the individuals to better pursue a collective goal. And gliding happens to just be one of those collective goals. In the case of the model cyanobacteria species, Seneca cystis, researchers have found that while individuals of the species can navigate in response to light, they are better able to orient themselves to light when they are attached to each other. It's like they go from stumbling individuals to a well-choreographed dance line. And the mathematical models suggest that even if a fraction of this colony can't respond to light, the overall movement around them will stay the same, taking everyone towards light and towards photosynthesis and continued life. So this seemingly simple movement brings complexity to these seemingly simple organisms, and scientists have been trying to decipher the mechanisms that drive gliding for many decades now. We mentioned earlier that where there's gliding, there is also slime. But we don't know what that slime is actually doing. There have been theories, of course, in one potential mechanism, the gliding cyanobacteria oozes slime to power it along the surface. In another, waves travel down the length of the filament to push it along the surface. But even as scientists have identified more of the components driving the movement of filament to cyanobacteria, the process, or even whether there is just one process, remains unclear. It seems like it should be so much more obvious, doesn't it? That there should be an easy answer. We know so much about flagella, and our own system of locomotion with legs, well, that seems pretty obvious. But then maybe that's what makes this so beautiful and infuriatingly difficult to explain, despite how long we have been working to explain it. For now, at least, it is a movement without an obvious metaphor. One day, we'll think of something. Thank you for coming on this journey with us as we glide through the unseen world that surrounds us. Thank you also to Endel for sponsoring this episode. Endel is an app that creates personalized soundscapes to help you focus, relax, and sleep. It uses AI technology, the pentatonic scale, and pure intonation to create simple, pleasant sounds that can help to calm your mind. Sound has a direct impact on your physical and mental well-being, and by adapting in real time to things like your location, your weather, your heart rate, Endel can help you out, whether you just want to sit back and relax, or if you're having trouble getting a good, deep sleep. And if you're looking for something to study to, you could check out their new Deeper Focus collaboration with musician Plastic Man. If you're interested in trying out Endel, you should try to be one of the first 100 people to click on the link in the description, because if you do, you will get a one-week free trial. There are now, arriving on your screen, a bunch of names. These are people all across the world who support us on Patreon. We have a little weird show here. And it's not designed to go super duper viral and get a huge, huge audience so that it can buy lots of expensive microscope equipment. So instead, we have patrons on Patreon. They are lovely. They are the reason we can make this show. Thank you to all of you so much. If you want to learn how to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash journey to micro. If you want to see more from our master of microscopes, James Weiss, check out Jam and Germs on Instagram. And if you want to see more from us, there's always a subscribe button somewhere nearby.